Today we are looking at one of the most common causes of heel contact, maybe even a shank, and also a pull and a slice. Let's go. G'day guys, Mike Beery here. Welcome back to another video. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. We've got so much cool stuff coming. We know you guys are gonna dig it a lot. And if you have been around and you haven't hit that subscribe button, because we know a lot of you watch the videos, but you haven't hit subscribe, boy, it would really help us out a lot. And I would be very grateful if you would do that for me. Alrighty guys, as I said in today's episode of why you hit a shank, we're looking at one of the most common reasons why that happens. You could also slice it, you could pull it. You might just hit it in the heel and not shank it, but all of them come from this same thing. Okay, what we are talking about today, guys, is the trail knee, that right knee for a right-handed player, left knee for a lefty. And again, this is something that I see regularly, almost daily in lessons for shankers. So that trail knee fires in towards the golf ball too early. And what happens is that starts to crowd our space. There's no room for the hands to fit. So the hands have to go out to get around this quad that is now in the way. Obviously the hands go out, the club goes out, we start striking it in the heel. And if we do it enough, obviously we're gonna to start to strike it maybe in the hosel. That's where the shank comes from. So it's a chain reaction deal, okay? We lose all of our space because that knee fired in, the quad's in the way. The hands have to figure out how do we hit the ball getting around that quad, obviously out, pulling back in down at the bottom of the swing. If we do all of that, right we can at least hit the ball solid right there's a high chance of when we do that that the path is going to start heading left because our hands are pulling in at the bottom part of the swing so depending on what you do with the club face if the face is square we're going to pull it close we'll pull draw it and obviously face open we're going to start leaking it to the right fade slice whatever the case may be quick interruption here for a second guys i did want to take a moment just to let you know about our golf schools we do one day schools two day schools all here out of dallas we do a combination of indoor outdoor on the course we also have some incredible golf schools coming up this spring and summer with some awesome celebrities check out our website don't forget to fill out the form send us a message and we'll get back in touch with you love to have you in a golf school. One of the little telltale signs that you'll see if you're doing this incorrectly is that knee firing straight up, that foot, that trail foot is gonna fire straight up onto the toe. Okay, that heel's gonna get up extremely high early. Now there should be a little bit of air between heel and ground when we're at impact, but if it gets up too high, too early, then that quad starts to get in the way. So what should that knee be doing? What should that leg be doing? Well, as we start, obviously we shift and turn our hips. The knee will fire slightly towards the golf ball initially, but we have to get that thing turned in the corner. We have to get that right knee going across to that left knee for a right-handed player, of course, as soon as we can. You could kind of think of a cue here as like kiss the knees, right knee, kiss the left knee. When all of that is happening as it should, that foot is gonna roll more to the side as opposed to just popping up onto the toe. The heel will beat the toe and that's another really good checkpoint to look for. So one of my favorite drills is the wedge the wedge drill. So let's say we're hitting a seven iron, you're gonna grab one of your wedges, doesn't really matter which one, take your normal setup and place that underneath the heel of your trail foot. When you first start doing this, I want you to start with practice swings, just waist high, waist high. And I want you to get a feeling of that right foot rolling. Don't let it lift, don't let the club drop. I know we said that we want a little bit of air underneath that heel at impact, but during these little half, half practice swings, I just want you to feel rolling that trail foot. Once we've got a little bit of a feel of that, it's time to hit some shots. We're gonna go full swings. I don't really mind what the speed is. You can bring the speed down a little bit, but I want it to feel to you like you hit, roll that trail foot, and then let the club drop after impact. Again, this is a feel versus real thing, so the club might actually drop a little bit earlier or it might start to drop earlier, but that's gonna be the feel. Keep that right foot or that trail foot rolling and let it drop after impact. One of those very simple cues is the kiss the knees, right? Up to the top of the swing, roll the trail foot, 
kiss the knees, get that trail knee moving over to the lead knee. Now we have that knee looking good. We're rolling that trail foot, it's happy days, but we do have one extra little piece. We have to train the hands to stay a little bit closer to the body. Remember, they were firing out, right? No good. So we need to keep those hands in a little bit closer to the body, almost feeling like they're touching our trail thigh at impact. Again, feel versus real. They're not gonna do that, but we need to feel that just for a little bit of overcorrection. Also, shout out to Tate from TruSpec for throwing a couple of shanks down for us, mate. Appreciate it, thank you. Guys, please do me a massive favor. Hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We are working hard for you. We've got some really good stuff coming your way. Wanted to say a quick thanks to everybody for watching. And of course, until next time, good golfing.